Welcome to video 175 in series 3 and now this is the first video of 2 where I'll set up a ranged ally. Okay, I went ahead and imported the Max Adventure model which is available from the Asset Store, it's free. And uh, we have to do a bit of work on it, it's an old model, so it still works well though. I'm going to convert it from Legacy to Humanoid, so that's the first step. Hit Apply there. Okay, now it's set up for Mechanim, but go to the Configure tab, and here it's set up nicely in the Tipos, and that's what we need for making a ragdoll a bit easier. Uh, so let's just copy that, so I'm going to just Control c that, click Done, and then jump back into our scene here, and paste it in. There we go, now we've got our uh, Max model in the Tipos, so let's just see uh, the size of Max. Actually, yeah, it looks uh, about right. Maybe he's a little short. I can't tell at the moment. Let me turn him around. 180. OK. And why don't I just hit play and that will become a bit easier to understand. So is Max too tall or is he too short? No, he's just about right. Good. So I'll just leave it at that. Uh, what I will do now is to change his materials. Uh, so currently they're legacy. I'm going to change it to standard specular and change the specular color to black. And uh, just turn the smoothness right down. So it'll look pretty good. And same for the max component, or the max material as well. Change that to standard specular, change the specular color right down, and just get rid of the smoothness in there. And it'll look pretty good. Okay, now I'll make a prefab because uh, I can easily mess up making the 3D ragdoll. So I just make a prefab now. So if I make a mistake, I can just get rid of it and then just uh, drop in my prefab and start again. So it's maxed, uh, ranged, ally is what I'll call it. And uh, it's going to be a, a prefab, an NPC prefab. So let me drop that there, good. Uh, now I can start with the uh, bone structure and uh, trying to make a uh, ragdoll. So just bear with me, it's a bit of a slow process, and I can easily get it wrong. Alright, so creating Ragdoll now, and the first thing is the pelvis, so I'll just drop that in, and the thigh I'll put for the hips, and the uh, calf for the uh, knee, and the left foot for, well, the left foot. And, uh, or, well, here it says middle spine, I'm just, sorry, just going down the list. I think I'll put, uh, perhaps, there's like one, two, oops double click accidentally, uh, three, I think I'll put spine two as the middle spine, I will put in the he head as well while I'm at it, okay let me continue with the other uh, bits, so the right uh, thigh for the right hip, and the uh, right calf for the right knee, and the right foot for the right foot, okay and then let me just quickly do the arm, so left upper arm, for left arm, left forearm for the left elbow, uh, now the right upper arm for the right arm, and the right forearm for the right elbow. Okay, everything's there. Yeah, it says make sure in T-stand. Uh, yeah, so the axes are probably a little bit uh, funny here, because when I click on the skeleton structure, uh, it's all over the place. So, it's a bit hard to say. I'm not sure what to expect. I'm just going to put the mass at 120, and uh, try clicking the create button and well okay I got pretty lucky there so it worked nicely I was expecting a disaster and I'll have to adjust the thing or delete and try again but that worked okay just the head collider is too massive uh, so that is no problem at all I'm quite happy to adjust that to something a lot smaller so let me try 0 0.0 on oh, no, that didn't work at all uh, not 0 0.03 0 0.05 and probably uh, push that down a little bit or yeah so in the X so the it's a bit funny the axes are all messed up so the X axis is our one for going down uh, so uh, what do I need to do put it downwards I guess a little bit so let me try that oh no wait put it up what anyhow so that's it uh, I put it a little bit more I still need to adjust it a little bit more so sorry, just bear with me there. Okay, so minus 0 0.04 looks just about right. Okay, we will come back to all of this uh, soon enough. We uh, to the bone structures, adding the various scripts and and so on. Uh, first, let's just uh, see what's on the enemy golem as our reference. So for our animator, ah, the golem controller. So I'm going to make a copy of that. 
Uh, so it's in the my controllers folder and I'm going to call this max controller because I'm going to change the uh, walk animation so that it uh, better suits uh, the uh, character that we have. And uh, this model already comes with the animations, so it has a uh, walk animation. Uh, let's just set it up. Uh, we do want it to loop, so do you make sure it's looping. Now it isn't actually, oh no, it actually is moving a little bit, so we should be aware of that, that uh, if we don't bake it into pose, uh, the way the animation, it might cause the model to look a little bit drifty, but it's actually so small, we probably would not even notice it. Uh, so I'll just bake everything into pose and hit apply there and I can just uh, I can see what that animation is okay uh, so simple enough good uh, that's our animation the walk one now let's go back to the animator controller I will uh, just uh, make sure that I am actually editing the correct controller so I'll double click max good go to the walk animation all right and then I'll just replace that so I'll go back to uh, Max and, oh sorry, let me just lock that so I don't lose it. And uh, just drop in uh, the walk animation from there to there. Good. Now I've got the new walk animation inside and I know it's referencing Max. Uh, so I'll just unlock that again. Go back and turn off apply root motion. Uh, so that's not applicable for us. And of course now drag in my uh, newly made controller. Okay, so having a look at the enemy golem again, uh, we have nav mesh agent. By the way, in this video, we won't get around to setting up the gun. It'll be t it'll take too long in one video. So in this video, we'll set up the NPC at least with all its scripts, etc. And then the next video, we'll take care of that and we'll have a functioning ranged uh, ally. Uh, now we have to uh, set up all this other stuff. So fastest thing, I think I will just copy this component and uh, paste it onto the uh, a max uh, game object. Now I don't believe the radius is actually 0 0.8, yeah of course not, so it's not that massive, so it's probably like 0 0.5, yeah. And the height certainly isn't that high, so let me just knock that right down to like 2, good. Uh, other things, maybe I'm, it needs to be a bit faster, say 4.5, and uh, Okay, and maybe the stopping distance, maybe because he's faster, I'll just let him stop from an earlier distance. Uh, okay, so that should do for that. I'll hit apply right now since uh, things are going pretty well. And I'll use my enemy golem as a reference again. And oh, okay, so it's just our NPC scripts. Uh, so the next thing to attach is the NPC master. So going to the uh, master scripts, let me just minimize this stuff here good and go to the NPC scripts and let's start uh, attaching stuff so yep he'll have an NPC animation uh, collision field is on a separate game object yes he needs to uh, drop items uh, he definitely definitely needs like the state pattern on so let me just put that on first okay and it requires a bunch of things as well uh, that we can allocate so let's do that so for example, it needs the head, so let's fit that on. Let's slot that uh, there as required. Uh, he's got a bunch of site layers, so uh, he should see everything except that the uh, player shouldn't block his vision and nor should other friendlies block his vision. Now, as for his enemy layers, that is enemy. And for his friendly layers, that's friendly and player. He has one enemy at the moment, we've only defined one, and that is enemy, and two friendly tags, and those are friendly, and also player. Let me just check that I have even made uh, such a thing as a friendly tag, yes I have, that's good. And as for layers, of course, obviously, I was just looking at that moments ago. Uh, Alright, so yes, he will have a range attack. Uh, let's have a look at these other things. Sight range, I'll set it up since he's a ranged NPC. Uh, these other things, attack, uh, melee attack range. He won't have a melee attack. Uh, range attack range, so I'll set that up as well to say 40. Uh, range attack damage, 5, I suppose so. Range attack spread, I won't make him so inaccurate. 
let him help the player a bit and increase his rate of attack by putting it down to a 0 0.2 uh, and then let's see flea range offset okay and right and required detection count I'll set that down so he's faster he's a bit smarter okay I need to plug in the NPC master while I'm at it there and I need to get the mesh renderer flag so I will just borrow the one on the golem well, I'll not borrow it, but rather copy it. So state flag. So let's just take that and drop it, drop it onto the max controller. Let me just uh, eliminate that one over there and reset uh, this thing's position. So it's position in X and position in Z. And I can just sort of drop it down. Good. And that's uh, probably just perfect. Uh, now let's going. Let's go back and uh, just set, put that state flag on now. There we go. Uh, and we'll come to the range weapon, I guess, in the next video. Okay, so let's keep on adding more scripts to this. So the next is head look. So let me drop that in. Uh, then NPC health. Okay, 100. Uh, NPC hold range weapon, yes. And of course, that's next video that will set that up. Uh, not the ragdoll activation. Uh, I've already put the state pattern. Yes, I will put take damage. And uh, no, don't check, should remove collider. And then these three turn off uh, scripts right here. So I'll just uh, drop each one of those on. So turn off animator, turn off nav mesh agent, and turn off state pattern. Okay, and I'll just hit apply there. Now let me just double check something quickly. So there you go. So I shouldn't forget to put the tag and the layer as I had done on the golem. So let me go back here and put the tag as friendly and put the primary layer as friendly and know this game object only not everything needs to have that layer uh, okay now next thing I'll copy over the hitbox that I have on the golem and just uh, reassign uh, it to the uh, max model okay I'll just rename that to hitbox and uh, just adjust its position so it's back where it needs to be And yeah, it's too big. Now, just before I start anything, let me just change that tag to friendly and the layer to friendly as well. Uh, and yes, it's, it is too big, uh, that hitbox. And, uh, just something else occurred to me. Sorry, I'll take you away from there. Going back to the state pattern, going to the site layers, just turn off ignore raycast as well. So that should not, uh, have anything to do with, uh, the site of the NPC. So I just turn that off. Now going back here, uh, let me see, I should be, uh, I guess I should be lowering the height of that, say to 2, uh, dropping the center down. So this is just guesswork, uh, there's no exact uh, thing to it. Let me go to ISO view, uh, oops, let me uh, put that better, there we go. Let me just zoom out and let me uh, go into one of the other views and perhaps I'll be able to get it uh, a bit more uh, appropriately this way. Oh, okay, so setting the height down now to 1, maybe a bit too low, say 1.01, .01, something like that, and I'd say that's uh, all right. Uh, now, as for the uh, Z, 0 0.5, maybe too much, 0.45, yes, that's better. Now, let me look from the front. Yeah, that's too wide, so that's uh, too much. So I'll set it to say 1. How's that? Yeah, that looks uh, a lot better for the hitbox. All right, so uh, other things are all set up just fine now. Uh, what I'll do now is to copy the collision field from the golem. Let me just rename that. And uh, put this onto the uh, max ranged ally. And in the same way, just reposition it. Good. OK, it's way too massive, of course. Uh, so let's uh, fix that. Uh, so first of all, I'll set the size Y down, maybe to like uh, 2.3 or something. Let me just give it a try. 1.1 for the height. Nope, that didn't work. So that's also too tall. So 2.1 perhaps. It should be a bit bigger than the hitbox. So that's one thing. It should be bigger than the hitbox because if it's not, then it won't uh, kick in because the hitbox is actually solid and stuff can't go through it. So you want the collision field to be just a little bit uh, bigger 
than the uh, hitbox. All right, so uh, just selecting that again. Uh, let me see. So for the X, once again, that's too big. Uh, and the hitbox, what I had put that? Yeah, okay, so maybe 1.1. 1 .1. And uh, just looking from the side now, yeah, too much. That's way too much. So I'll say 0. 0.6. And what was the hitbox? 0. 0.45. All right, so that should do it. That should make for pretty good uh, throwing stuff at this um, uh, NPC. Should be pretty fun that way. Actually, no, that's too wide, don't you think? I think so. Yeah, that's too wide. So I'll set that down to like 0. 0.9. And uh, as also, as for his hitbox too, that's too wide. I'll set it down from 1 to like 0. 0.8 or something like that. Yeah, that looks a bit better now. Okay. So let me hit apply there. So I've got some of the essentials now on him with the collision field, the hitbox, but the, uh, of course, I haven't set up the uh, skeleton yet, the rag ragdoll rather. I've not set the components on that. Okay, so I should get a, get to start, uh, we'll make a start on that. And uh, let's have a look. What I need to do is to turn off the collider and on the uh, ragdoll components and turn the uh, rigid body to is kinematic and also drop on the ragdoll activation script and any uh, of the objects that have a uh, a uh, a connector on them so like this one the character joint i need to enable projection so let's keep going through so for the thigh turn off the collider because we don't want the uh, ragdoll to be active immediately uh, it will uh, be very expensive to have that all active and the model animating and colliding with itself. Uh, now let's drop on the ragdoll activation script, enable projection. Uh, let's do that for the calf as well. Turn off the collider. Turn on, uh, turn on is kinematic, enable projection. Oh, projection. So why am I doing that? That's to stop the uh, model going wild. Like, uh, let's say there's an explosion and you'll find that bits of the model are flying off into space and it looks funny and it's spinning. And well, OK, you can tell that I've done that a bit. And that's how come. Uh, that's why I turned that on to stop that behavior from happening. Uh, OK. Let me just double check that, make sure I didn't do anything. So yeah, do take care with this because uh, this is if you uh, yeah, this is something that if you make a mistake on, then you'll be scratching your head for a bit trying to figure out what has happened. Okay, once again, drop on the ragdoll activation. Uh, yep, enable projection. Did I do that for the last one? Yes, I did. Good. And drop on the ragdoll activation script. Okay, coming to the spine. Uh, once again, enable projection, ragdoll activation. Now coming to the head. Uh, so for the head, it's a little different. I do want the head to serve as a hitbox as of sorts. Ah, right, that reminds me of something. So coming back to the hitbox, there we go. It's too tall. Now I realize something, something wasn't quite making sense in my head. And what that was, was quite simply the uh, collider needs to be below like the headline. Otherwise, uh, the uh, head, you won't be able to uh, do like a uh, easy or clear like headshot on the model. So uh, let me just uh, lower that down. So it is too high then. So 1.8 and change this to 0.9, for example. And that is uh, that that is looking actually uh, uh, just about right. It's almost there. Uh, in fact, it's 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 good enough. So I will actually just keep stay with that uh, instead of fiddling around a bit more. And okay, that's good. Now continuing on. So leave this on. Leave the frigid body on. Yes, enable projection. Yes, uh, uh, the uh, ragdoll activation. In truth, though, I don't think you need that. So let me have a look though what I did for the enemy golem just to remind myself. Oh, I did actually put that on here, uh, but I didn't actually uh, disable anything. So that's uh, it's actually not doing anything on the head itself because it's already enabled. But what I do need is an NPC take damage script. Anyhow, I'll put that on. And I'll just set that to 5. So just in case for some reason um, these things are disabled, they will be enabled at least. 
Oh, and don't remove the collider, just leave the uh, collider on there. So just put the damage multiplier. Okay, so let's keep going. Turn off the collider here. Yes, check is kinematic, enable projection. Let me just make sure I did that. Good, I did. And uh, add on the ragdoll activation. I'm sorry that I'm probably boring you at this stage. Uh, but yeah, we just have to do this bit of tedious work. It's a one-time setup for each model to get it ready uh, for use. And uh, another thing with the head, we do need to change uh, probably the layer and the tag. So let me uh, once again double check what I had put in the golem. Yes, it does need to be uh, enemy enemy or in this case friendly friendly. Otherwise, uh, it won't work for the uh, damage uh, application for the head of the ally. So let me just change that friendly and friendly and no only this object so this object only okay so continuing onwards so the upper arm the forearm good uh, the right upper arm okay let's set that enable projection turn on the ragdoll activation forearm good enable projection ragdoll activation all right, so that should be uh, everything there. I'll just hit apply and save all of those changes. I'll just minimize that and just check. Uh, yep, I have set uh, the key things that I do need, which is very good. Uh, so in fact, this model should run. I can do something else. I can uh, set them to follow the player. So why don't I just do that? and uh, just give him a player to follow so there we go and the my follow target and where is our player there he is drop that in good save that and uh, i could even make more than one and why not at this time go to the spawn so i'll activate that and instead of the old golem of course it's the new one that we have. Uh, I think I'd already saved everything, but I'll just hit apply anyway, just in case. And uh, I will then assign that to the spawn. So I'll get rid of him from the scene. And in the spawn, put that there. So going to my prefabs, NPC, and uh, I will just assign that to the spawn game object. And seven of them will spawn. Okay, let's hit play and uh, see how that goes. All right. So I've forgotten to do something. Let's have a look at that. And uh, that means I have not actually assigned something. And uh, it's telling me that I haven't put a particular script on, or rather that I haven't actually assigned a ranged weapon on the uh, ally just yet. So actually just turn off has ranged attack for now. And uh, <laughs> I'll just put it, it look really silly with the melee attack. We'll come back to this in the next video when we actually set up the gun. Let's give that a second try. All right, good. So they immediately rushing off to attack. And uh, well, this is just not going to end well at all. And in fact, looks quite ridiculous, actually. So yeah, so that didn't end well at all. How about uh, this time I'll just turn off the spawn uh, or I'll just put I'll just put one enemy and then try that again and see how that looks okay so they they detected the enemy immediately so they're going to go and deal with that first and they'll then they'll start to follow the player and once okay good so they've defeated the enemy and now they're actually going to follow us around uh like they're supposed to and they'll continue to to de to, de to detect uh, any uh, enemies if there were any more. So there you go, our ranged ally is uh, just started to work, the initial stuff, uh, but <laughs> we really need to uh, make them ranged. So that's the uh, next video. We need to do a lot more work uh, for doing that. Well, not too much more. We just need to put the gun on, put on some handholds, and uh, then assign those to the model to make the model hold on to that stuff. Okay, but otherwise, that's pretty good. So thank you for watching, and I apologize if I did bore you part of the way while we were setting up and taking uh, quite a bit of time to set the model up. But now we have the model set, set up, and in the next video, we'll complete it, and we'll have a nice working ranged ally. Alright, so thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.